Today we're continuing our sermon series, Reset, Finding Your New Normal. Uh, this series is designed to help us prepare ourselves about what's the essential nature of church and how do we live out our faith in the world in which we live today. Today I'm going to be talking about reasonable enthusiasts. Reasonable enthusiasts. And we're going to spend most of our time in Acts chapter 4. It says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were of one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything that they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify. They continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, and there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostle, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. And I want you to see the connection between these two incidents. That it's not just about prayer and this is about what their community was like, but this was intertwined. And in these two incidents, what you see is the essential nature of the church. Did you catch it? What they did was they loved God, they loved one another, and they loved the world. They loved God, loved one another, and loved the world. And what I want us to do is think about and look at this in greater detail. First thing they did was they loved God. What they did was they spent time celebrating who God was. In his book, The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference, Malcolm Gladwell says this about the Methodist movement. He writes this. In the late 18th and 19th centuries, the Methodist movement became an epidemic in England and North America tipping from 20,000 to 90,000 followers in the United States in the space of five or six years in the 1780s. But what was unique about the Methodist movement was two things. First was they organized. So when a preacher like myself or any other preacher would preach the gospel, for those who were awakened, for those who were excited about this newfound hope, what they would do is get them in a group and they called it a class meeting and they would start to encourage one another and they would meet regularly to encourage each other in their faith. The second thing that they would do is that the Methodist movement was characterized by fervent spirituality. Fervent spirituality. In fact, critics to Wesley and the Methodists called them quote unquote reasonable enthusiasts. The reason they called them a reasonable enthusiast was because they were not like some who just sang enthusiastically and worshiped enthusiastically, which is what they did, but they combined this heart religion with also a head religion. In other words, they were not just seeking to be informed in their heart, but with their minds as well. They loved God with their heart and all their minds. Perhaps the Holy Spirit is limited to what he can do in our churches today because we lack that fervent expectation, that hunger that, resi that resided in the early church. Are we overflowing with enthusiasm? Would we be considered reasonable enthusiasm, enthusiasts in terms of our faith? Second thing we find about the early Methodist movement and uh, the early church is they loved one another. They were all on the same page. In other words, they were unified. If they had an extra piece of land, yeah, we just put in the pot for the community. Or if they had what we would consider maybe a stock or something, they would sell what they had. Hey, I, I have what I need. I want to make sure you have what you need. Your church family is here for you. We care for you. And if you have a sincere need, please let me know. I will be glad to do whatever we can to try to help you in your time of need. There are times of plenty and there are times of want. And that's what we need to be to each other. We need to be able to support one another because we do love one another. The third thing I want you to see is they not only loved God, they not only loved one another, but they loved the world. They loved the world. 
They prayed for boldness to be able to share their faith. That God would do miraculous signs and wonders, not for uh, the benefit of making them look good, but so that people could see the truth of the gospel. And the vision of the early church, the vision of the Methodist movement, wasn't just to spread the gospel, wasn't just for their churches and their movement to grow bigger. Their idea was that society needed transformation. John Wesley was not only a great theologian, but he really did try to transform society. He wrote this, Oh, be not weary in well-doing. Go, go on in the name of the God and in the power of his might, till even American slavery, the vilest that ever saw the sun, shall vanish away before it. He wrote a letter of encouragement. He wanted to transform society. But what about us? For us, he wrote something else that you may have heard of, but it's really simple for us. He wrote this to those in his movement, to do all the good that you can, in all the ways that you can, to all the souls that you can, in every place that you can, in all the times that you can, with all the zeal that you can, as long as you ever can. He believed that God didn't come to call the righteous, but he called to call the sinners to repentance. Love God, love one another, and love the world. This is Christianity. This is the, the heart of who the early church was. This was the heart of the Methodist movement. Church is so much more than a building. It is about loving God, loving one another, and loving the world. And the Holy Spirit wants to continue to transform us. And if we're just simply the same person we were six months ago, then you have lost this opportunity. God wants to transform us. And he wants to do it even today. I want to close uh, today with this, this prayer. Would you pray this out loud together? Holy Spirit, I need you. I realize that I cannot make it without you in my life. Guide me in the way that I should go. Order my steps in your word. Come and assist my prayer life. Empower me to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Help me share the message of faith in the power of your spirit. Give me a holy boldness to speak your words. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.